Hello and welcome to the CMC Markets Monday Market Update webinar with myself, Market Analyst David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 30th of October and the time has just gone 12.15pm. Now, uh, this, as always with our webinars, we start off by showing you the risk warning slides at the top of the webinar. Uh, this is just purely something to keep our compliance department happy. It essentially states that any of the information or ideas or opinions that, are, that I give today are just my own personal views. They should not be construed as explicit trading or investment advice. This is just purely my commentary and analysis of what we may or may not see moves-wise in the financial markets over the next few days or weeks. So I'll just leave that there in front of you on screen. Do you to have a read through uh, yourself? It's, it's fairly straightforward. As I mentioned, it's just purely to keep our compliance department happy. Um, it is all very straightforward material to, to, to go over. Uh, we're kicking off with the webinar itself. Once we get the last slide, uh, which is this slide, out of the way in the next number of seconds. As always with the webinars, I'll cover through the main events of the week, um, what has happened in the last few days, what is what is what is you should keep an eye out for over the next five trading days. I'll cover the main markets, and if there's any markets that I have not covered, please feel free to um, to mention those. So taking a look uh, at how things have started off uh, on, on the trading session. Uh, We've seen, broadly speaking, we've seen moves higher uh, in Europe. Obviously, the, the FTSE is, is south of 7,500, but broadly speaking, the European equity markets are a touch higher, with the except Spain is doing exceptionally well, given what was going on in Catalonia. But, 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 but the markets in Germany and France and Italy are only marginally higher, and the FTSE is a touch lower. So the, the Spanish market is a standoff performer. And... Given that uh, the events that we saw on Friday, you, you, you can see why. Uh, for those of you that didn't catch the news of the last few days, essentially the, the Spanish Senate was and in, in on Friday afternoon was due to cast its vote on whether to invoke Article 155 and effectively implement direct rule in Catalonia from Madrid. And as the Catalans uh, nationalist separatists knew that was coming, they took they, they took the decision while the par Parliament was still, um, still in place to vote for independence, which they did. But shortly after they voted for independence, because they knew the clock was ticking, the Madrid government, that is the Spanish Senate, the upper house in, in, in the government of Spain, decided to in, in, invoke Article 55 and, and they, in, in, in impose direct rule. That then turned around and the, the, the Catalan, the president of Catalonia, has since been, has since been sacked. Uh, and, and the parliament, uh, well, and the parliament itself has has has, um, has been shut down, and direct rule has been imposed. One of the a one of the newspapers over the weekend, Le Monde, I believe, was pronounced the world in English. Um, did a did a uh, an opinion poll survey, and it points to it point to the, 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 the a snap election has been announced has been announced um, for December twenty first. And for the time being, the majority, the, the Catalan nationalist majority, the, in the, the poll over the weekend indicated that the Catalonian nationalist majority may actually lose their majority. And, and we could even see a hung parliament uh, in the region of Catalonia. So automatically, the markets are looking at that and going, for the time being, Madrid has run over Catalonia. And also, one of the, uh, one of the surveys that we have seen has actually pr proved that you actually, um, has actually pointed to that we could see the Catalan mass separatists actually lose their position. And after seeing here uh, one individual, Andrew, stated he can't hear anything. Can anybody? Can everybody else hear me okay? If you could just please uh, respond, that would be fantastic. I know at the very top of the webinar everyone else could hear me, but if you could please um, uh, re reply in the box, that would be great. Is everything else okay? Yes. Erson Oz. Excellent. Yep. Yeah. So it does appear that uh, in relation to in relation to um, individuals hearing, I think everyone else can hear, hear but except for yourself. I so if we could possibly, which is suggest to me that. Uh, if there's any issues that you can't hear, it might be on, on your end, seeing as the 
as all the other participants on the webinar can hear okay. Uh, so proceeding, as I mentioned, the Catalan Parliament has been suspended, and on the back of that, what we have seen is that and also the, the, the call of a snap election on December 21st, and a poll indicating the Catalan separatists may actually, may actually lose their majority um, in the parliament, could actually point that, that point us in the direction that Catalan nationalism or separatism isn't as popular as one would actually suggest. And for other reason, we've seen a push higher in the, in the Spanish market. I'll take a quick rundown of what's going on, on on the various different markets across Europe. And as always, with our webinar, uh, any of the any of the major uh, moves markets that I haven't covered, we will then actually talk about uh, what what you need to keep an eye on in terms of economic indicators and corporate stories. Taking a look now at the FTSE 100, um, first off the bat here, the FTSE 100, as you can see here, as um, has put has, has bounced back from the, from the large sell-off that we saw at the back end of last week. It's by and large it's still it's the, the bullish move that has been in place since mid since mid September is still in place. The market has run out, run out a bit of, bit of momentum here, pull back here into this price region here, south of the 7,500 mark. If we do retake 7,500, the next level we, we, we could be looking towards on the upside will be the October high in around 7,561, and then north of that we will look into the all-time high at 7,599. Should we remain south of 7,500, we could be looking back down towards 7,425, which also kind of, kind of coincides with both the 100-day moving average and the 50-day moving average. So this could be an important price metric to keep an eye on, uh, this region here. Bearing in mind, uh, the market has been pushing higher since September, which is still in place, but it, it is something to keep an eye out for. Notice how momentum has been to the negative uh, in the last few sessions. So the slip off here in positive and in, 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 in price to the south has also been mirrored and confirmed by the decline in negative momentum. What I'll quickly just going to run, run through are the um, is the, is the uh, before we actually deep talk further about the individuals individual markets. Uh, I'll have a quick run through. Uh, the week ahead, what is what is to look out for? So if you go to our website, cmcmarkets.com, under news and analysis, click on the news analysis tab. From there, if we go to the filter by, uh, third option down is the week ahead. Give you a rundown of the major of the major corporate and economic announcements for the next few trading sessions. So looking ahead to tomorrow, we have a interest rate decision from the Bank of Japan. Uh, we also have update from BP. On Wednesday, we've quarterly figures out from the electric car maker Tesla. Also, Wednesday, we have an update from third quarter numbers. We've quarterly an update from Facebook in the United States. Thursday, we've quarterly numbers from Apple. And also on Thursday, in the daytime, we have an update of the Bank of England update. It's not mentioned here, but it is covered in the economic calendar. We also have non farm payrolls on Friday. So, quite a bit going on this week. All the things which you got to keep an eye on, which aren't necessarily fitting in perfectly into an economic calendar because they can just crop up um, as things go along. We could hear, we could hear who the, the next chairperson of the Federal Reserve is going to be this week. Um, Donald Trump, allegedly, Donald Trump's favorite uh, for, the, for the job is Jerome Powell, who is, who is kind of quite neutral in terms of interest rates. Uh, interest rate um, hawkish dovishness is quite neutral. Uh, and also, Mr. Powell is, is also in favour a bit more on the on the lax regulation side in comparison to other uh, individuals. It's also worth pointing out we could hear further details of Mr. Trump's tax reforms this week. So these are things which are also going to be going to be keeping an eye out for. We do have quite a, len a lengthy uh, list of companies that are reporting their quarterly numbers this week. Mastercard, for uh, as I mentioned on Tuesday, we have updates from BP. Uh, we also have a number uh, numbers out here. From Pfizer, the U.S. drug maker. Scrolling down, uh, United States Steel on Wednesday. Uh, we, have, we have we have an update from Denny's. We also have uh, figures out from GoPro, Groupon, Heinz, Kraft Heinz coming out on Wednesday. On, on top of that, scrolling down, as I mentioned, Tesla. Looking at Thursday, we got we have a number of up, up, updates from, from BT. Uh, we also have an update from Apple. Scrolling further down the list, uh, we also we also have updates from Tate Lyle here in the UK, and on Friday we got no major uh, companies reporting in their numbers. So while the uh, while the FTSE is languishing below 7,500 and it's slightly in the red, 
the German market is continued to be in quite decent shape. Only on Friday we saw a record all, fresh all-time high for the Germany 30, as we call it here at CMC, the DAX, as, as it's known. Uh, while the market is, is, is hitting on fresh all-time highs, that really tells you that the, the sentiment that isn't that is um, that is in play. So the, so the bullish sentiment for the Germany 30 is still very much in play. If we do see any pullbacks, we could see a pullback into this price here, the low of Friday, coming into play at 13,153. South of that, this area here, which would be the, uh, one of the former peaks of October, uh, coming to play at 13,095. So this, if you do see any pullbacks, we may see some uh, we, we, we may see some buyers enter the fold in around these two price areas. Bearing in mind, as I mentioned, we had an all-time high on Friday. The sentiment is clearly at the moment, and, and the sentiment is clearly is with the bulls. So levels to watch out for to the upside, because this is fresh territory. Traders are going to be keeping an eye out for psychological psychological numbers such as 13,000, 300, 400, 500, and so on and so forth. Also, it is worth noting the relatively weak euro for the last the last few days is helping the eurozone equity markets as well. Keeping an eye now uh, on uh, on the Spanish 35, the IBEX 35. This has been quite an interesting one because the Spanish market has been coming off since May, uh, long before the Catalan separatists really um, up the ante in the last month or so. So the Spanish market was already in decline, and notice how even in October but it, it was already in decline, and and unlike the the uh, the DAX in Germany, it didn't get a good break out to the upside. It was pushing steadily lower throughout the, month, throughout, the, uh, throughout the summer months. And on quite a few occasions, this line here, the 50-day moving average, acted as resistance uh, to potential or to uh, attempts to try and drive the market higher. Now that we've, moved, we've clearly moved well above that, this level now, um, the 50-day moving average at 10,267, may now actually act as support now that we've, we've cleared that metric. So if we do take out... This level here, the 100-day moving average, because it did act as resistance and support back in July. If we do take out the 100-day moving average at 10,422, we could see the market push higher. And one potential level to watch out for to the upside will be one of the one of the, one of the uh, mid-August high at 10,576, and then beyond that, the August high itself of 10,758. But that's just looking at, at the uh, at the upside, and notice as well how our momentum. Look at the, at the MACD indicator, and the momentum component has swung to positive. So as the market's moving higher, that's being confirmed by this by the upturn in positive momentum. Um, I'll, I will answer the question in relation to the um, the the CMC earnings report uh, in just in just one second. Uh, the, 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 while I'm going through the um, the the chart on the uh, on the IBEX 35, so as I mentioned, as the market's pushing higher, that's been confirmed by a rise in positive momentum. But if we do see a decline uh, in the Spanish 35 in the IBEX 35, we may find support in around the 50-day moving average, seeing as it actually managed to um, quite successfully act as resistance over the summer months. So keep an eye on 10,266. If we do dip below that level, next area potential area of, of support will come into this this region here. It's not a precise number, but just a price region at 10,100. Throughout October, just north of 10,100 acted as fairly decent support. A lot of buyers came into the fold just north of 10,100. So moves lower, we could even actually see. Um, we could see some, some buying power, buying pressure come into support, come in play, come into play around then. South of 10,100. Next level to watch out for the downside will potentially be the October low here, uh, just so, uh, at a price of 10,000, sorry, 9,866. In relation to the questionnaire, where can we find the earnings report? CMC doesn't make them available. Do they? We don't actually allow the actual earnings report itself. Um, but, but, but what we do is we just point out the date. Uh, what we just point out what date they are going to be reporting. Obviously, broadly speaking, in the United Kingdom, British companies usually report at 7 a.m. Uh, that isn't always the case. Some companies like HSBC have their other numbers out uh, around 3 a.m. 
GlaxoSmith Klein and some of the pharmaceuticals off the top of my head sometimes report around midday, but broadly speaking, it's 7 a.m. is the time in the United States. Some companies report before the market opens, uh, which often be, and it can be anything from um, a two or three hours. Okay, obviously, the clocks change in, in the United States. Um, right, have, the clocks change have influenced things uh, ever so slightly. Usually, uh, we, we, we get we get US numbers coming out from around 11 in the morning to around half one. But given that the, the clocks have changed in the UK and they haven't changed in the US yet, uh, what we could see is that we could see a scenario whereby numbers in the US are coming out as early as 10 a.m. up to half 11. Um, to be honest, we here at CMC, um, yes, in relation to where where our earnings typically publish Bloomberg. If, if, if quite frankly, there, there are several different articles. You are, you are, usually, you will see an update from CNBC. Usually, you will see an update from Bloomberg. Even the Financial Times, the Telegraph, the Wall Street Journal. There are lots of publications out there. Uh, I would, quite frankly, I would just suggest uh, going to Google and just typing in the name of the company and looking under Google News. They're normally quite quick to um, to have, have an article, even if it isn't too detailed. CNBC have, have, have an alert system whereby as soon as uh, news alerts get published, they get pinged out fairly quickly. Uh, so I'll keep an eye on that in terms of actual news flows. But unfortunately here at CMC, we don't push out the, 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 those details. We will just um, we will talk about when they, when they come out uh, on our economic calendar. Also, follow us on Twitter as well. Um, keep an eye on our, on, our, on our Twitter handles because some of the corporate events that, 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 uh, that, that, that as they unfold, we will often tweet about the companies and the numbers that they have. Okay, turning our attention now to the U.S. indices, uh, a, a quick run, rundown of what's going on in the U.S. markets. The U.S. markets are exceptionally strong. Uh, as you can see here, the, the Dow Jones has been going on to hit, uh, well, well, quite a string of, of re record highs. The market did seem to be kind of running out a bit out of steam. Um, and it is also worth pointing out, uh, if you look at the at the positive momentum on the MACD indicator, you can see as the market isn't really edging any higher, we can see positive momentum is in decline. Could be an early warning sign that the market at the bulls are kind of pausing or running out of steam. And we may see a bit of a pullback, but keep bearing in mind, it is, this is a solid upward trend. So the big picture uh, is still to the upside, uh, but it's, I'm just, this, this is just an indication of the moment the decline in positive momentum, it could be an early warning that we may see a bit of a pullback. And if we do see a pullback, we may see some buyers enter the fold. Levels to watch out for for, for potential pullbacks. This level here below of, of, of Wednesday comes into play at 23,249. And then south of that, below from last from two Thursdays ago uh, at 23,000, the figure itself. So these are areas we could potentially see um, the market pull back to should we see and, and move lower in the Dow Jones. Uh, the S&P 500, it's a fairly similar situation where, whereby we saw quite a few records being being reached. And then, um, and then what we saw was we did see a, um, we, we saw a bit of a pullback on a few occasions. So as you can see here, the first thing you notice in the chart, it's almost at a kind of a broadly speaking, a 45 degree line roughly. Uh, the market's in a solid upward trend. And we, as we can see here, as the market is edging higher, we're eking out fresh all-time highs. Fresh all-time high was created last Friday. And we're not too far away from that today uh, after the weekend. What I will say to you is it's a bit concerning that when the market is pushing higher, creating all-time, fresh all-time highs, and we're seeing the, the, the momentum from the MACD indicator actually in negative territory, that is that is a bit more that is a bit worry, worrisome, right? That could be an early indication that we could see a bit of a pullback. And notice how we have seen sizable pullbacks in the past before creating fresh all-time highs. So similar what we saw in August, market went to an all-time high, pull back before we, before we pushed higher. For example, if you look at this chart, this, this 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 candle here from Tuesday the 8th of August, what do we notice? The market pushes higher, creates an all-time high, goes through a bit of a plateau phase. Positive momentum on the MACD indicator is steadily declining, even swings into negative territory, manages to kind of jolt higher slightly, create a fresh all-time high, while the market is clearly in negative, negative momentum. Uh, what, what was that a, a foreshadow to? Is a foreshadow to quite a sizable correction 
in the S&P 500. But once again, before the resumption of the wider upward trend. So we may see a, 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 that being reflected here whereby the market is pushed to an all-time high, but yet the momentum is still in negative territory. So we could see a bit of a shakeout of, of some of the stocks. So we could head south down towards 2,560, 2,544, or maybe even down as low as 2,531. But the big trend is still to the upside. So traders, as is fresh territory, are going to be looking towards numbers like 2,600, 2, a big psychological number, which we're not too far away at the moment. Well, seeing as we have quite a positive run on, on uh, European and US equities, it's quite the opposite for gold. Uh, gold has been in decline since basically, well, for about six weeks now, since early September, coming up in two months actually, since early September, it hit a 13-month high here, and it's been in a fairly consistent downward trend ever since. We did see a bit of a pullback here, but the market has turned over, over on itself yet again. Combination of things, risk on, strategy, risk on attitude by traders, we mentioned all-time highs in the DAX, S&P, and the, the Dow Jones, in, not all within the last week, week or 10 days. Some of them even more recent than that. Bit of, a, bit of a push higher in the US dollar. Speculation over a new Federal Reserve uh, chairman. Also, the, the relative weakness of the euro in relation to the ECB update last week has also led to a bit of a kind of a strength in the US dollar. So, obviously, an inverse relationship between perception around Fed rates and the strength of the greenback and pushing and weighing on the price of gold. And notice how last week gold seemed to be a lot of consolidation in around the one or day moving average. When gold was, was moving south in September, it hung around the one or day moving average and a fairly sizable break below it. And then it acted as support on the way up, on the kind of on the bounce back from the sell off in September, on the way down again. It spent quite a bit of time trading in around uh, or just, just north of the one or day moving average, which comes into play in around 1275. But now that we seem to have kind of broken below that, could be an indication now that the one or day moving average at 1275 may now act as resistance for the price of gold. Uh, if we do, if gold, if gold does remain below 1275, one or day moving average, we could then look back, we could then potentially look back towards 1260, uh, or, or just, just north of 1260 was the October low. And also kind of coincides nicely with where the two day moving average would come into play in around the 1260 region. I notice how as the price is falling, we're also seeing an increase in negative momentum. So the negative so the momentum confirms the direction of the price of the price of gold. Should we trade uh, should, should we see a break below 1260? Uh, the next level to watch out for the downside. Could we saw a bit of consolidation in the 1230 region here? back in July and south of that if you go below 12.30 we could be looking back and towards the July low of 12.04 but if you do manage to retake the one day moving average at 12.75 levels to watch out for to the upside would be this price here on uh, the October high at 13.06 and then north of that we could be looking towards 13.16 and 13.34 as I mentioned um, early, at the beginning of the, of the webinar, we do have an update from the from the United States this week. Big one to watch out for: non-farm payrolls have been, as as potentially to be very volatile for the gold market, and also silver, which we'll be covering now in one second's time. Keeping on silver, as you can see, it's a fairly similar chart to, to gold. It hit a multi-month highs here in September, and we saw a, we saw the market push lower on. Uh, back to its lowest level since since the previous month in August. The market bounced higher and has been s selling off steadily ever since. Similar enough to gold, it, it was getting support from the one day moving average in around this price here last week, which comes into play in around the 16 spot 85. And now, of course, we're actually south of that metric, so that 16 spot 85, the one day moving average may now well act as resistance to moves higher. And should we remain south of that metric, uh, the next potential level to watch out for to the downside will be the October low in a 16 spot 33, and then south of that at 16 spot 13. And if you take out that, we can then be looking back towards some of the some of the lows in July in a 15 spot 61, and then south of that at 15 spot 06. But obviously, if you do manage to take out take out the move back north 
of the 100-day day moving average. No, we, we could be looking towards this price action here under on the 30 moving average at 17 spot 81, and then beyond that we'd be looking towards the October high of 17 spot 46. Taking a look now at the oil market, Brent went on to hit a 28th month high, so the momentum is clearly with the bulls. And as you can see here, as I mentioned, a 28 month high gives indication of how how how, how, how um, which way the sentiment is. Taking a look here at the uh, at the low since June, broadly speaking, it's been a nice solid upward trend. Fair enough, the oil market is quite choppy, so when the market has pulled back, you do see some quite sharp jaws higher, but you also see some, some quite swift moves lower when the market does turn around. But broadly speaking, it's a nice solid upward trend we've been in since July. We hit a 28 month high today. We can see here. As the market was pushing higher the last few days, it swung the, the momentum swung from being a negative to positive, and it's actually been growing. So you can be more confident that the move is going to last. So we're looking up to the upside: sixty-one dollars a barrel, sixty-two dollars a barrel. The the, um, the the dollar handles are worth keeping an eye out for the price of Brent. I meant to click on a, and the next big one to watch out for to the upside is going to be the two hundred week moving average which comes into play at $62.91 that's going to be the big one to watch out for so we got we got 61 62 and 62.92 up to the upside for WTI what you do want to see and it's also going to confirm the both charts here solid the market, as the market was moving positive on a weekly chart here a nice solid increase in positive momentum and then we flip over to a daily to a daily chart and you can see, as I mentioned, in the last few days, it swung from being in negative territory to positive territory, so you can be more confident the move is going to last. If we do see any pullbacks, we could find support in at $60 a barrel, south of that in a 59.51, and then below that back towards $48 a barrel. So we did see quite a, it was a very popular strategy, the buy the dip strategy over the last few months. So these are potential areas we could see uh, buying buyers stepping into the fold should we see a downturn. Looking now over at WTI, it's in a multi-month high, not, not as aggressive as Brent, but the, the chart doesn't look too dissimilar. Uh, first thing you notice here is that it's traded north of the April high, so we're now at the highest level not seen since uh, kind of since uh, May of this year. Similar to Brent, looking at the lows from, from late June, broadly speaking, a nice push higher. Uh, we're at a multi-month high. We're at a multi-month high. Positive momentum has really taken off the last few sessions, so you can be more confident that the upward move is going to continue. So, for the time being, bulls are going to be fixated on the February high of $54.63, this price here. And a move north of that will then bring traders looking towards $55.56. Similar again, keep an eye out on the 200 week moving average at $58.75. And listen, it's obviously a bit further away than, than, than Brent is from its 200 week moving average, but it's going to be a big level to keep an eye out for. We'll have a look now if should we see any downside moves in, in WTI where, where we could potentially find some support. So we're, we're pretty much at that level now, not too far away from it now, which is the uh, which come which is coincides with the April high of eighty five dollars. So eighty sorry, apologies, fifty three dollars and eighty five cents, and then south of that we could be looking back towards fifty three bucks a barrel or this this high here from September uh, at fifty two dollars and fifty three cents. These are potential levels we could see some buyers stepping out of the fold if we do see a, a bit of a pullback in the price of WTI. Just having a look now. I'll have a look now at a couple of, at, at the um, both uh, the Nasdaq and also the, um, the price of Apple in just a, in a couple of minutes' time. And I just want to quickly run through some FX pairs. First of all, turning our attention to the U.S. dollar versus sorry the euro versus the U.S. dollar, we could be looking at a, a potential head and shoulders top reversal pattern on the on the on the euro dollar. Uh, for those of you that, that don't know that um, that um, particular chart pattern from technical analysis, 
In effect, this is a, a, a snapshot here uh, taken from stockcharts.com. It effectively, it effectively shows you head and shoulders whereby the market rallies to one point here, creating the left shoulder, has a pullback down to here, pushes on higher here, creates a head, and then that head, then that, the correction of that head goes back here, not too dissimilar to the, to the reaction lows from the first shoulder, so creating creating a neckline along here. Market pushes higher here again for the, to create the right shoulder, and the right shoulder does not take out the, the the height of the head so it kind of creates almost as, as the as the name suggests kind of a head and shoulders is what appears to be appears on the chart and then the market then breaks back below uh what's called the neckline here where you draw a line between the reaction lows from the left shoulder and the head and it pushes lower it's not uncommon for the market to after it breaks below the neckline to return to the neckline before we see another sell-off again and in terms of rough price um, target prediction, the you measure the price action, the price distance between the, the, the height of the head and the neckline, and then you project that to the downside once, once it breaks south here. That's a very quick rough rundown of a head and shoulders top reversal pattern. And if you just look at this chart here on the euro dollar, the market pushed higher here, creating the left shoulder, Pulls back to reaction lows after the correction of the uh, creating a multi multi year high. Pushes higher here, creates a head at this price here uh, at say 120.92. Then drifts back lower again in around to the 116.70 region. The reaction low of of the head pushes higher here. Uh, tops doesn't even get as high as 119. And then looks to actually push lower yet again. And as you can, as I pointed out, the the right shoulder didn't get anywhere near as high as as the head. And if you notice, the the neckline when you kind of join the dots and draw a, line, a parallel line across from the reaction lows of the left shoulder and the reaction lows from the head comes into play in around the 116.70 level. Now we've actually dipped back. You actually dip below that. And as I mentioned, it's not uncommon. For the market once it breaks below the neckline to move back up the neckline before potentially moving south again as i stated in determining price targets on head and shoulders top reversal what you do is you take the, the high of the head which comes into play at 120.92 and then subtract that from where the neckline is in around 116.70 you're talking over 400 pips there and you can project that to the downside so taking over, over 400 pips south of 116.70 will bring it back, back down uh, towards kind of the, 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 one, the 112 uh, south of 112 but as you go south towards 112 you will come into you will come into a couple of areas where we saw some consolidation so we did see some price consolidation in around the 113 mark looking at the trinity moving average the, the trinity moving average comes into 112.50 that could be a stumbling block or else or else 112 itself so we could be looking at a reversal head, head and shoulders top pattern on, on the on the euro dollar, and uh, the, the textbook price target would tell you it's somewhere in around the in, in around the price target would be, be somewhere sub 112. But as you as you pointed out, heading back towards sub, sub 112, we we could, we could potentially incur some um, support in at 113 or at one one twelve fifty. I'll quickly run through what's going on and the pound versus the the pound versus the US dollar. Pound US, bearing in mind, we do have the Bank of England update this week. Uh, there's, I think, that there's probably more traders than than uh, than not expecting a rate rise from the Bank of England this week. A lot of it's already been kind of priced in. Uh, so if you don't see a rate hike from the Bank of England, we could potentially see a, a, a big sell-off in the in the in the price of the pound. Bearing in mind. The FTSE 100 is very uh, sensitive to fluctuations in the British pound. So in our direction, we see a move on the British pound. Keep an eye on the FTSE 100. Broadly speaking, if you look here from the lows in March, the pound has been kind of trading higher highs and higher lows. We've ha we haven't had a, it's in a really tight range uh, on the on the, the, the on the pound versus the US dollar in the last few weeks. Uh, but at the same time, we're still above the water day moving average, and the water day moving average did act as support uh, on a few occasions within the last few months. So while we, we remain north, 
of the one or two moving average at 130.06. It's likely we could see, it's, it's potential, we could potentially see a further move higher, a wider a continuation of the wider positive move on the, on the pound versus the US dollar. Uh, one of the areas that it would need to actually overtake initially would be this area here, uh, 132.67, and then beyond that, the October high at 133.35. And then beyond that, we, we, we saw some price consolidation in around the 134.52 level. And then, and then of course, looking, looking beyond that again, will be the September high of 136.59. Should we move south of the 50, of the 100-day moving average at 130.06, we can then bring us back down towards 129 or even down towards the 200-day moving average at 128.43. Turning our attention now to the euro versus the British pound, euro sterling. It's broadly been moving higher the last number of months, but not too dissimilar to the pound versus the US dollar. It's been in a relatively tight range the last few the last few um, the last few weeks, and the market is is size is clearly below the, the one or day moving average, which does seem to act as a bit of a consolidation area. And also notice how. The, it, it failed to take out the 50-day moving average on a couple of occasions, so the market could be turning over on itself. And as I mentioned, the, there's been a broad sell-off in the euro ever since Thursday's update in the, uh, the, uh, by the European Central Bank. So we've been pushing lower on the euro versus the British pound. As you can see, the price has been nudging lower. Looking at the momentum indicator, a part of the MACD, we can see that momentum is positive momentum declined and actually swung into negative territory, so we're confirming the negative move. We could see some support come into play at the 100 day moving at the 200 day moving average, which is in this price here in around 80 sorry zero spot 8755. And if you go south of that, we could then be looking back down towards zero spot 8600. Notice how the market actually stopped short of the 200 day moving average here in September, and it did act as well both support resistance and then support back in uh, in, in the in, in bay time so that's why it's a it has acted as support resistance previously so as, as it has formed it may act as a, a support to the downward move that we're, that we're that we're currently seeing here move to the upside the first big level need to take out will be the 100 day moving average at 0 spot 8941 and then beyond that the 50 day moving average which has acted as resistance on a couple of occasions this month in at 0 spot 8975 and then if we go beyond that, we'd be looking towards uh, zero spot nine. Um, we'd be looking towards ninety pence, and then we're looking towards zero spot nine one zero zero. Keeping an eye now to have a turning our attention now to the U.S. dollar versus the Japanese yen. Just one second there, please. Since September, uh, early September, the dollar yen has been pushing higher. Shinzo Abe, uh, as remain as Prime Minister of Japan, he's very much in favour of doing all it takes to get to get inflation basically off 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 the ground in Japan. A stimulus, and he use whatever stimulus he can. So we've seen quite a decent appreciation in the yen on the back of that. Also, as I mentioned, the United States has. Um, is looking to select a new head of central bank. It could be looking to, towards Jerome Powell. Some of the US indicators have been strong recently. We've done for payrolls coming off this Friday, so keep an eye out for that. So while the market has been pushing higher, uh, it failed to take out the July high at 114.49. So that, that's something to keep, keep an eye on. But it could just be the market putting back for potentially the next move higher. If you do take out 114.49 on dollar yen, the next level to watch out for will, will be... Um, this level back here from back in January in at 115.62. And then beyond that, we're obviously looking, looking towards about, about, about the 117, uh, 118 region on that. Notice how, as the market has come off here, we have seen a bit of a slight decline in positive momentum. So we could see a bit of a pullback, perhaps, maybe towards 113, and maybe back towards 112, or maybe back down towards the 100-day the 200 moving average at 111 spot 74 but the trend has, has been very consistently higher for the last say six or seven weeks we're on a multi we've hit a multi-month high uh only only on friday so i would suggest that kind of the wider upper trend is is likely to stay in place i'll take a look now at the nasdaq 100 which, which had a great day on friday given the updates you had from alphabet google's owner uh microsoft and also amazon 
given that if the market hit a as well, it's pretty much not too far away from uh, an all-time high. I would say I would be I would be cautious uh, about looking at taking a taking a short position um, from a call at a top too early on the uh, on the Nasdaq 100. The market has been pushing higher, solid upward trend. If you notice here how the um, the momentum swung from negative here into positive and it's been a, quite a common theme that we've seen uh, on the on the Nasdaq uh, for a number of uh, for a number of months now. Markets pushes higher. Well, I, one of the reasons why I like to use the MACD indicator is that we can we can see where the momentum is. And while the market was pushing higher here, we saw the market create higher highs all along here, but the momentum indicator was steadily declining. And then of course what we see a large a large drop off, large sell off, but only only a correction. Of the rally to want to push another high here similar similar situation here mark has quite an, an intense sell-off and you can that's reflected by the by the steady increase in negative momentum and then as mark pushes higher again what do we see we saw something similar on the sp 500 where the market was on hits an all-time high it's an all-time high and quite steadily declining the momentum and what does that do we see a bit of a correction here back pulls back a few hundred points only to go on and hit a new all-time high so the way I see it is that the market is going on, that the wider trend of, 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 of moving to the upside is still is in place. And at the same time, uh, positive momentum is actually expanding. So if you are going to use, if you are going to have an indication of what could be an early indication of a bit of a, uh, of a, bit of a sell-off in the NASDAQ 100, I would, I would keep an eye on the MACD indicator. We, we may, if you see divergence between uh, either positive momentum declining or even even increasing negative momentum while the price is moving up, that could be an early warning sign that we're in for a bit of a correction. But while while the market is creating all time highs and it's in positive positive momentum, uh, we, we could it, it is likely that we could see additional um, uh, all time highs being created on the uh, on the Nasdaq. In relation to Apple, of course, have numbers coming out. Um, have, have, have numbers coming out on Thursday. Uh, people were, were quite downbeat about about tech stocks. They were pe people were afraid. This sell-off that we saw here uh, was because we saw a lot of cons concern that the tech uh, earnings weren't going to live up to expectations. And if you look at Alphabet, Google's owner, Microsoft, and Amazon, they all have steadily increased in profit, steadily increased in revenue, and all exceeded expectations. And that's precisely why we saw this number here. I know what you're saying. There are some concerns in relation to in relation to iPhone sales, China uh, and, and and India have their, have their own smartphones, which are kind of gobbling up some of the competition from from um, from the products from Apple. We're also seeing a bit of a kind of a saturation of the iPhone market in the kind of Western world. You know, people aren't necessarily changing their their smartphone as quickly as they as they once were. So we could see um, we could see a bit of a dip potentially on iPhone sales, but. It's obviously going to be an important factor in, in the, the Apple numbers are going to be a big player in what we see out of the, of, the, of the movement of the Nasdaq. But I will say this, bearing in mind people were concerned about expectations being too high going into Apple, Microsoft and Amazon. And look what happened there. Market cleared up on Friday. I'm going to create record highs. Um, it's, it's actually good timing that the German numbers came out uh, just here. It'll give me it'll give me a, uh, a moment an give me a, um, give me a hint to show you on our platform where we have our economic indicators what you can do on our trading platform is go to the market pulse section click on market calendar and this here is an economic calendar of all the major economic events that are, that are as planned for the week what you can notice how the, the economic data just actually appeared on my screen as the numbers came out if you on the right hand tab here if you click on the alert what you can do is the alert will just automatically if you have the trading platform open the alert will just ping up on your screen so you don't have to worry about missing economic indicators it'll show you a breakdown of the numbers uh what what the actual number is in this case german cpi came in at 1.6 percent the consensus that the forecast was for a reading of 1.7 percent and the prior reading in the previous reading was 1.8 percent so it's obviously very useful information, and it gives a full breakdown of what, of, uh, what we can expect. We even actually give a rating here, red being the most important, 
uh, and then obviously other, other 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 colors and dots indicate that it isn't as important but if I was you, if you're, if you're going to be trading the financial markets, you need to know what, what economic indicators are coming out, what time, what the, the prior reading was, and what the consensus was. As you can see here, we have, uh, we, we have the we have the alerts tab set up here. So if you want to keep an eye out, if you want to be kept in the loop, you don't have to actually worry about keeping an eye on the screen while it comes out. Just take this, this alert here, and it'll actually automatically keep resetting for you. Keep, as I mentioned, Bank of England have their rate decision at 12 o'clock, high noon on Thursday. And looking ahead to Friday, we can have a quick scan of what we can expect from the non-farm payrolls. Speaking of which, I'll be talking about our seminars and webinars uh, in just one second because we do have one for non-farm payrolls. We are looking for, we're expecting a number of 315,000 to be added for the payrolls. Uh, that is, and and because, because our clocks have changed and the American clocks haven't changed as of yet, that is why uh, it's going to be out at half 12 this Friday rather than the usual time of half one. So now you know where to find economic indicators. I'll show you on our platform as well. Um, some of the charts that I've even covered it myself in this webinar, if you go to the market pulse and click on chart forum, third option down, this is the chart forum here. Um, you, you will get a rundown of, of, our, of our commentary analysis, a few hundred words written about a, a particular chart. And some of the stuff that I use in this webinar was actually was already on the, on the chart forum. and. Uh, keep an eye on that. That that gets updated several times throughout the day. The market insight uh, here. Click on mark. Click on the market pulse. Second option down. Some of the articles that we write and some of the economic uh, some of the economic data alerts get posted to uh, the insight section. And the other ones that don't get uh, posted to insight get posted to our the news site. Our our this is on the website itself. So if you go to cmcmarkets.com under news analysis. You can see here on the topic, they give you the most most popular and most most recent articles that myself and other analysts here at CMC have written. And uh, lastly, before I wrap, wrap wrap up this webinar, I just want to point out that we do have other uh, events uh, on the horizon. On Wednesday, Wednesday coming Wednesday, the first of November, uh, at nineteen thirty Greenwich Mean Time, uh, London, UK time. We have a webinar covering live index trading and, the, and, and covering the, the key global indices. And as I mentioned, we have non-farm payrolls coming up this Friday, Friday the 3rd of November. So that means, therefore, so therefore we will be having a webinar covering the non-farm payrolls. Our webinar starts at 12.15 uh, because the numbers come out at, tw at half 12. So on Friday the 3rd of November, 12.15, Greenwich Mean Time, UK time, we're going to be having an update. We're going to be having the non-farm payrolls webinar. And then as we do every Monday, at 12:15, Monday the 6th of November, this day week, I'll be back. I'll be, I'll be back in the hot seat covering uh, the weekly market update. Um, thank you very much for your 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 um your your, your attention. Please sign up for other other webinars. Uh, please contact us on Twitter if you have any questions uh, in relation to what's going on in the news and the markets. I've been Div Madden. Thank you from everyone here at CMC Markets. Have a good trading week and good luck. Uh, yes, there is going to be a recording of the webinar. Yes, you, you're very welcome, Giuseppe. Uh, in relation to the webinar, in the, in, within the next hour or so, I will be tweeting it out, a copy of this webinar, and I will also I'll go back and show you uh, Market Insight. Market Insight can be found by clicking on Market Pulse, second option down. I have the tab open right here already. In about an hour's time, I'm going to have a copy of the, a, a YouTube video of this webinar made, and it's going to be, I'm going to tweet it out for myself, and it's also going to be on the Insight, so keep an eye out for that. You're very welcome. Have a good trading week, and good luck.